Hello everyone, my name is Chris McCool and today I'm going to present to you, in a nutshell, some of the work that we've been doing around crop agnostic monitoring using deep learning. Why do we need crop agnostic monitoring? Well, if we want autonomous systems or robots like Bonbot that you see over here going through a field, in this case sugar beets, and then deploy it also then in corn, then we need to have systems that can deal with the different cropping environments and the different systems that we deploy them on. In this case, Bonbot might want to go through and detect all the different sugar beets, and also if it's going to do weed management, detect all the other different plants that are, in this case, weed species. Another system that we have in a completely different environment is Paddobot. Going through, in this case, you can see it going through a glass house, and the task here is to go through and detect and count the number of sweet pepper within the field. Now, if we want to do that, we need a system that can solve, in particular, two particular uh, tasks. The first task is, task is to be able to go through and find all the sweet pepper in the image. So we need to do detection and find per pixel where they are in the image. And you can see that idea over here. But that on its own is not sufficient. So if we think about the fact that we want to go through and actually do some, a task like counting, we need to resolve the fact that the fruit has actually been seen in the previous frame and that we go through through that video sequence and say it's the same object throughout that video sequence. And detection on its own, as you can see through those flashing colors, has no idea that this is the same object. And so we need to resolve that tracking issue to be able to track those objects. So we can go through and do something like you see over here, where we go through and find all the different sweet pepper in the field and actually estimate how many we have, and it also, for instance, estimate their size and their quality. In this case, we're looking at the ripeness estimation. So we have green, immature sweet pepper, mixed color sweet pepper, and also red, and also yellow, uh, mature sweet pepper. How do we go through and do that? We use deep learning systems, in particular a mask RCNN system. We do a few different adjustments to that, where basically what mask RCNN will do is take our input image over here, It'll feed it through that deep learning system to provide an output. In particular, one of the first outputs that we get is this instance map, where we go through and we find, in this case, casting the problem as finding all the different plants. So in this case, we're not worried about the different species, but in this case, we just want to find each individual plant within that image. Same idea for sweet pepper. We want to go through and find each individual sweet pepper in that image. And then we add on top of mask RCN in this parallel layer where it's a subcategory. And this subcategory can be for whatever task we have, and let's use the instance in this case of doing weed management, we actually care about the subcategory being the different weed species. And so you can see that idea over here where the different colors in the bottom, uh, bottom right over here are in fact all the different weed species that we have. And so we can join that with the instance mask and actually say, per plant, what species of plant is that? And we can go through and find the crop, in this case, uh, sugar beet, and also all the different weed species and understand the interaction and the state of that particular field. And that's great because that allows us to go through and take an image of the 3D world and actually have within that image where all the different objects are. In this case, we show up for sweet pepper. This is our orange frame where we can see in the image where all the different sweet pepper are. So how do we deal with the fact that we have a moving system and we want to do counting? Well, if we think about the idea that now we've got the second image over here in Cyan, we can start to think there's a pretty high overlap because we've got high frame rate cameras. We exploit that as well as some extra information about the fact that we've got robots or autonomous systems moving through the field, and we've got a good estimate of how they move through that field. In addition to that, we have not only the color image, but also over here you see a depth image where pixels that are really bright are far away, the close ones are dark, and the black ones, for different reasons, we don't actually have a valid depth estimate. But what this does is allows us to see the scene in a geometric way to have the 3D information that we exploit so we can go through and actually track the different objects in the scene by not just assuming that we have a high overlap between these two images, but also because we now have an estimate of how the robot or the camera moves within that scene, we can then take the previous estimate of where the fruit was, project it to the new frame, and have a really good idea that this is actually the same object. And that allows us to do some really good tracking. And let's have a bit of a look at how this works with a little bit of noise. So this is a sugar beet field. And in this case, we've got a fairly large object. Let's assume that we get a detection over here at the initial frame in red. And then we go through and get the next frame in green and have another detection. And what you see here in yellow is the intersection. 
okay? And they do a pretty good job of actually saying this is probably the same plant if we did this. However, this alone is not sufficient because we also want to track these small objects over here, which are sometimes the weeds. So what happens with these small objects with this kind of idea? We have the same kind of shift. We get a detection here in the first frame, and then we have the second frame, and we have the same amount of shift. And you see for a small object, what's going to happen is that there's much less of an intersection between these two masks. And so it becomes ambiguous if this should actually be the same object. So how do we go around and solve this? Well, we have a slightly more robust system that actually uses the concept of a dynamic radius. So we find the center of mass of each object in each frame, and then draw basically a circle based on that particular size of the object, dynamic, and then associate the center points to each other if they're within the circle and closest to each other. And that works consistently both for the large objects and also, as you see here through the visualization, also for these smaller objects and being able to actually track and resolve that this is the same object within that video sequence. And that allows us to do things, for instance, on BonBot to go through and actually detect all the different sugar beet in the field. These are now green within there. And all the different wheat species are the different colors within the field as well. Additionally, because we've got this depth sensor, this was also talked about, we actually have a, the visual viewable area. Okay, in a metric space, this means per millimeter, we have an idea how big the plants are, how well they're growing in competition with the weeds. And that, in a nutshell, is crop agnostic monitoring using deep learning. You can find more information from the paper that's freely available within Frontiers in Plant Science. Thank you very much.